What's up YouTube? I had been out to this call a few days prior and um, put in a few pounds of 410A refrigerant. Um, the system was not that old, within five years old, and so I recommended a leak search simply because if you still have a warranty, it makes good sense to use that if you've got a leak. Obviously, if you have a leak and you don't have a warranty, it still makes sense to repair it, but the cost is significantly lower if you still have a warranty. So, it took us a couple of days to get back, but uh, we came back and uh, started digging into the unit outside. I had actually done a leak search on another similar system, and the leak was actually outside. So, I figured I'd start there and then move inside after the system had been off for a while for everything to settle down a bit. Um, crawl space isn't the greatest, but um, yeah, let's see how this goes. My bloodhound is actually, at this point, um, I've got it back, but at the time of this video, my bloodhound was actually out for repair. Um, there was a wiring repair that they had made. They'd replaced the sensor and refilled my um, reference bottle. So that's why I wasn't using it in this particular instance. Uh, my backup is this TIFF. I believe it's the ZX-1 and has worked really well for me when I've needed it. Um, some of the issues I've had with it are not related to whether it can find a leak or not, but my own problem of trying to keep track of when I last charged the device, which reminds me I should probably bring it in and charge it now. But um, yeah, there we are. Pretty much got nothing on the condenser and moved into the crawl space here in a minute. A secondary condition that I had discovered actually as I was crawling out of this crawl space once I was finished was that um, someone had overloaded a crawl space electrical circuit. They had installed a dehumidifier, a condensate pump for that dehumidifier, and this condensate pump all on the same outlet. They had a big old splitter on it and this pump was actually not working at all um, at the time, but uh, obviously that's an electrical situation, something that uh, an electrician is going to handle much better than uh, I would. So I informed the customer of that and uh, made sure that they knew that they would need to address that particular instance. At the time, I simply um, 
disconnected to prove that the pump was still good and it was not a pump failure issue. Honestly, when I get this far into a leak search and have not been able to find any indication of whether or not I've got a leak, my heart sinks a little bit because it means that um, I may have to dig deeper and spend a lot more time finding uh, a leakage. Uh, I'm sure you guys run into the same thing where you look over 99% of the system and are unable to find anything and then obviously your last one percent of the system is the only place that you have any potential for rede redeeming yourself while uh, finding this leak. I think we're getting close to a winner. Three, two, one, and we have a winner. Thank goodness, I was getting a little worried.
obviously I cannot see what I'm looking at, so that makes it a little bit frustrating. Possible to show you guys where that was, but uh, bottom of the last bit of end coil, about halfway through the middle, the sucker's leaking. I was out here a couple of days ago and uh, put a couple pounds of refrigerant in it and uh, recommended a leak search. Would have done it at the time. But uh, we were running slammed, so we uh, scheduled to come back so that we could find the leak and uh, get the necessary parts or work ordered so there we are your most common leakage is your evaporator coil it's always surprised me a little bit because of the fact that the outdoor coil is subjected to the conditions but that rarely leaks, you know? You don't see a whole lot of condenser coil leakage issues. So, another ream coil bites the dust. We've got a RHLL HM2417JA. Little two ton heat pump. So I will let you guys get on with not watching me shake my head around. <laughs> <laughs> 